Hello! Hi! Uh, welcome to Chasm Words. Uh, my name is Sam and this is my channel. If this is your first time visiting, hello! Thank you for stopping by and if you're returning, hello! Um, <laughs> not to pull like a Curtis Connor and do like the extra greeting. I'm still trying to figure out how like greetings and intros and outros are gonna work on this channel. Obviously like baby steps, we're taking it one at a time. But this is another vlog. It is March 30th, so we're at the end of the month. It's been a really long month. I think in a good way though. But let's let's just let's just dive let's just dive into what I'm reading. First of all, I am about to start The Lost Spells by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris. This book is absolutely gorgeous. Like stunning. Just art upon art upon art. And it is poetry and I want to read the first poem aloud because it's just so nice and it also like the beginning of this book is like this is a book of spells to be spoken aloud so I think it'd be really nice to do that uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do that in a moment but the other books that I am reading I am about a quarter a third of the way into this is how you lose the time war by Amal El Motar and Lex Gladstone this is so good. I'm enjoying it so much. I've seen such mixed things, so maybe the ending might change my mind, but I am really enjoying the exploration through all these different worlds and time periods, and it feels a lot like letting my imagination just run around on a playground. I'm also really enjoying both red and blue. I think they're really great characters. So that's my main read, obviously besides the poetry book. I am also rereading Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I'm about here. I am going through it and I'm annotating. Um, let's see, like here's an example of some annotations. Mostly, while I am underlining and highlighting some of my favorite quotes and moments, I am mostly going through and pulling out pieces that feel very relevant to the time period um, or plant seeds of the time period because I'm working on a writing project set in a similar time period and I thought it'd be great to go back reread this book which I read last year and fell in love with and this time pay attention to sort of these little things. I'm really enjoying that. Like rereading this book has brought me so much pleasure. I'm going so very slowly through it. If you've been watching my last couple vlogs you definitely know how slowly I've been going through this book. I don't read it every day. I do it maybe like once or twice a week. Um, but it's been great. It's 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 such a good book guys. If you haven't read Pride and Prejudice, what are you doing? That was me until last year. <laughs> what was I doing? And then the final book that I'm reading right now I'm actually listening to on audiobook to and from my rise to work and that is Children of Blood and Bone by I don't wanna I don't wanna make it Tomi Adiyame. This book is super hyped. It's been hyped pretty much since it came out. I've had it like for a long time and I just, I decided time to finally pick it up. The narrator of the audiobook is really good. I'll put her name down here because she's phenomenal. I'm not super far. I'm just like here, but it's, it's kind of, it's kind of scratching an itch. I'm not far enough to really know what the plot is, but I like the characters so far. I like the world building so far. I really needed a like YA fantasy. I recently finished Legendborn. That kind of fit my like YA urban fantasy scratch and this is kind of hitting my YA fantasy scratch. So that's really nice. But um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna read the first poem from The Lost Spells. And this vlog is actually gonna be bookended by this book. I, one of the things that I've been trying and experimenting with is like how long I want the vlogs to be and I'm going to read one poem of these a day. I'm not going to be reading it aloud to the camera every day. I think that'd be kind of like crossing a line somewhere in the like who owns uh, language but I will be reading the first poem and the last poem at the very end. So uh, that's how we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. I don't know how many poems are in here so I don't know how many days this vlog is going to be but that's how we're going to guide this vlog. Red Fox. I am Red Fox. How do you see me? A bloom of rust at your vision's edge. The shadow that slips through a hole in the hedge. My two green eyes in your headlights rush. A scatter of feathers, the tip of a brush. I am Red Fox. When do you hear me? A scream in the night that stops you dead. Dark torn from dark, a bolt through the head. My sorrowful love song howl to my lover, a trash can clatter from twilight's cover. I am Red Fox. Where do you find me? In cops and spinney, ginnel and alley, for I haunt city as I haunt valley, climbing the fell side, crossing the pass, 
walking the high street, bold as brass. I am Red Fox. What do you call me? Shifter of shapes and garbage raider, bearer of fire and space invader, taker of risks and riddle maker, messenger, trickster, curfew breaker. I am Red Fox. Why do you need me? I am your double, your ghost, your other. The spirit of wild, the spirit of weather. Red is my fur and red is my art and red is the blood of your animal heart. So that's Fox. So what's today's plan? It is my day off. I was planning to order noodles and company for lunch, which I tend to do on my day off, but my local noodles is actually closed until three o'clock and I'm very hungry, so I think I'm going to make some soup. I'm going to watch some booktube. I'm going to be doing some editing today, both of like video footage and of books. Yeah, a lot of that going on. I'm also doing my laundry currently, but uh, that's always a process. I, f I don't like doing laundry. It's my least favorite chore. But yeah, let's, uh, let me uh, take you along with me today. Okay, it's kind of at like a precarious position right now, so we're gonna like hope it doesn't fall. Quick update on this is how you lose the time warp. <clears throat> I am <laughs> nearly done. I don't know why I thought this book would take me longer than it is. It's very short. Today is the last day of the month. I might finish it. I honestly don't mind if I finish it this month or next month. I don't really judge. By month I go by like season, like if I read a lot in a season or not. So. It's kind of either or for me, but I am really enjoying it. It's really good. Like I said, it really feels like my imagination is allowed to play around in this text. I also really like the letters. They have that sort of vibe of, you know how you like look at someone's like book of letters from like the Victorian era and historical people, like historians will be like, oh, they were just, they were just really good girlfriends. Like they were good friends and they were both girls and they were just good friends. Like that's what it feels like, those kinds of letters. Sometimes slightly explicit, like they did get to a point where they're like, I love you. But a lot of the times it's just this gorgeous prose of these two characters talking to each other and clearly confessing, you know, how they feel about each other without like directly confessing it. And it just evokes this very old flowery language even though it's like a futuristic type story <clears throat> and I really liked that. Liked that? I'm liking it. I am worried we're getting to a point where like something just happened and now I don't really know how they're gonna get out of this but I'm 
really 100% enjoying it. I'm so glad that I got the Illumicrate edition because it's just really nice to read it in hardcover like this. And I keep, you know what's nice? I really expect it to be like, I love blue or love red, but I like them both equally. I like them both equally. So outside of reading, I work today. It's a closed shift. Tomorrow is another closing shift. Um, and Friday is a mid shift. I don't know. There's like not much going on. I did my writing for today. Yesterday I spent a lot of time editing and that gave me such a boost and excitement to write again because I felt like being able to go back through the first 10,000 words of the story and be like, all right, this is where I started. This is great. I'm very happy with that still and I can't wait to do more. And that was really like really a good motivation for today. I wrote um, more than I had planned to. So that was awesome. I'm going to go edit some footage for a video that will probably go up before this one, which is, oh, it's my uh, Barnes and working at Barnes and Noble Secrets video. So I'll, I'll link that up here as well as down below if you're curious and watching that. That was a lot of fun to film. I'll, uh, I'll see you in a bit. Maybe I'll check in again tonight. If I finish the book, I'll definitely check in again. The poem from The Lost Spells today was about moths, and I hate moths. Like, you know that scene in Schitt's Creek where, <laughs> like, David hates moths. Like, I, I'm David. Um, <laughs> I hate moths. But it was still a lovely poem. I had to kind of, like be like ugh, moths but it is what it is super quick update before i go to work i finished reading this is how you lose the time war i loved it i think i gave it four and a half stars it was so good um just it all the emotions it just it was it was really good uh i've seen like a lot of mixed reviews for this book and i don't know why well no i don't know why because like looking at it i'm like this is amazing i uh, <laughs> people who don't love this book don't like it i am really i gotta go watch some like negative reviews or something because i am really like genuinely curious but since i finished that i am picking up this is book three in the bridgerton series i'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it in the vlog because i am having a bridgerton only vlog will go up once i finish the entire series um but this is benedict's story I'm super excited i really like raced through anthony's and like my mental health is still just like tanked right now and very much in the way that I'm like my coping mechanism is I'm going to read and do nothing else because I need to escape um from my own mind so that's uh that's what I'm gonna be doing today is Thursday I work I will work and then I'll come home and then I'll probably read because I did everything else I needed to get done today I was originally going to actually film another video but uh don't love filming when other people are like doing things <laughs> around the house it just makes me feel very skittish so i was going to film but then my brother's shift changed so he didn't end up going to work until later and then i didn't have really time to film so i think i'm gonna film that monday instead but that's okay i uh i'm still like on track for things i want to get out which actually that video is gonna be my five star predictions reading video and that'll be going up before this one comes out this vlog comes out so definitely um definitely check that out if you haven't those are the books that i think i'm gonna rate five stars just like based on their descriptions and like early hype and how i feel about the authors and everything so yeah it was a trend i saw like was really popular and i was like this is fun i want to do that video so I, I am i am doing that video i think that's it really nothing exciting it's only thursday <laughs> And I work this Saturday. I don't normally work Saturdays, but I'm working on Saturday. And it feels weird to have, like, today and then two more days of work. Like, my mind is, like, having a hard time, like, recognizing that it's Thursday because of that. But mm, it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be good. <clears throat> see, you in a, see you in a minute.
Okay, it's Monday. I haven't been vlogging a lot and I'm sorry about that. Mental health has been not great. And as much as I like these vlogs and want to be like honest on these vlogs about that kind of stuff, I don't think it's like to anyone's benefit to watch when I'm like in a really, really bad place. So yeah, haven't been vlogging. Honestly, my days lately have been work reading i've done a lot of reading um for like escapist value and a lot of time just like lost watching tiktoks i'm working really hard to get my like day back in order so i did wake up at 7 30 when i wanted to today and i went to bed last night when i wanted to so i'm really proud of that and i think i can manage it again today i am working today um i have the clothes shift so I have to kind of cram what I, what I want to get done uh, into this morning, but I think I can do it. So I thought I'd do a quick update before I go put like some concealer on and film a longer video. But where am I with all my reading? So I've continued reading The Lost Spells every day and I've been reading it aloud and it is lovely. I'm just about this far. I, I don't know, I thought I'd be flying through this one because I didn't think there were that many poems. The way it's set up, it kind of disguises how many poems there are in here but I'm not I'm actually taking quite a bit of time with it and I really like it so yeah the last one was gorse and there was a line in here that I really liked it was each of us is partly made of gorse of course prickly cussed hard to parse and tough to handle all helter skelter points and angles but only ever seeking love and giving shelter like it's just a very nice it's very nice it's very nice I like it a lot I was also reading An Offer from a Gentleman, which is book three in the Bridgerton series, but I finished it. And I don't want to go into a lot of thought because I'm doing a Bridgerton vlog and uh, review when I finish the series and the vlog's been kind of like ongoing. <laughs> but uh, these books have just consistently been problematic. And as much as I see them as like guilty pleasure reads, I'm getting very frustrated with the problematic elements so. but finishing that actually opened up the door to start the light of the midnight stars by rena rossner this one comes out on april 13th so it's not out yet i got an arc and i'm so excited i read the first two pages which is like a small introduction and it's already giving me so many fairy tale vibes and i'm just i'm really excited this one I'm just going to read you the back of it because I don't 100% know what it's about uh, other than it is like a historical fantasy fairy tale-esque story uh, that is heavily influenced by like Jewish mythology. So this is how a fairy tale begins. Deep in the Hungarian woods, the sacred magic of King Solomon lives on in his descendants. Gathering under the midnight stars, they perform small miracles, and none are more gifted than the great rabbi Isaac and his three daughters. Hannah, bookish and calm, can coax plants to grow even when the weather is bitterly cold. Sarah, defiant and strong, can control the impulsive nature of fire. And Lavana, the fae one, can read the path of the stars to decipher their secrets. When a darkness begins to sweep across Europe, threatening the lives of every Jew, the sisters are forced to flee their home. But in the end, danger will reach even those who, they, who thought they could escape it and each sister will have to make impossible choice to survive and change the fate of their family forever. So I'm really excited, really excited for this one. I might finish it before the book comes out. It is the fifth today, so that does give me quite a bit of time, but if I don't, I'll definitely finish like right around when the book comes out. And I think I'm going to try and do a proper review video for this one since it is an arc. So you can look forward to that. And then the final book that I have been like reading is Children of Blood and Bone. I've been listening to the audiobook, but I'll be honest, haven't read very much of it. I was enjoying it, but I just wasn't interested in connecting in a story as I drove to work, which is really when I listen to audiobooks. So I haven't really been listening to it. Maybe today, I don't know, music has kind of been nice because it can kind of turn off like the thinking part of my brain, but it's also going to be a busy morning, so I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done, so maybe I'll want to listen to the audiobook as I go. So that's updates. <laughs> um, I, yeah, like I said, mental health's been kind of ugh, but otherwise I'm fine. Yesterday was Easter. Easter went well, I guess. The weather is turning really warm, which I like, but I also hate because I don't really like warm weather clothing. As you can see, I'm wearing like sleeves. 
you can't see but I've got long pants on too so yeah I need to go through my closet which I knew I needed to do anyways for like spring cleaning and so I need to just find like decent warm weather clothing I can wear to work but that's that's a problem for another day <laughs> so uh, so yes I will see I'll see you in a I'll see you in a little sometimes self-care is not getting anything on your list done because it is hot as fuck outside and your mind is exhausted from waking up at six in the morning to go to work and that's just what I'm feeling today right now this very moment all right it is Wednesday Octo October I wish it was October April <laughs> April 7th the I hate this weather. I hate when it's hot and humid and that's what we've had and it's only April. So like what the hell Illinois? Not okay with it. <laughs> I need to get, I have a air conditioning unit but it's in the attic. So I need to get that. So that probably won't be until Saturday. So I have like three more nights of this bullshit. Um, so you're gonna see my mood is just like not great because I hate this weather so much. I'm also, I'm wearing short sleeves. I hate wearing short sleeves. I hate summer clothing. So if you suggestions, on like good summer clothing that's not necessarily short sleeves or is like well, I don't know just different I have seen some people recommend I think it was light linens and you could have like long sleeves so um looking for that next time I go to the store which will be a long time so I'll probably shop online but I thought I'd do a reading update um I don't have that much to update you on but it has been a couple days I think since I did any updating so I thought I would do that I only have like 10-ish minutes before I have to leave for work, so yes, but uh, that's fine, that's fine. I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping because, so yesterday was the day First Became Ashes came out, but my order didn't come in yet because I placed it at work. I don't know what's happening there, I placed it a long time ago, I, I just, I don't know why it's taking so long. I really, really want this book. I did say I would like drop everything to read it and uh, yes, absolutely, that hasn't changed. Um, Light of the Midnight Stars hasn't caught me so much that I'm like, ah, I can drop this in a second to read First Become Ashes. But first, update on the ro lo 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 <laughs> update on the Lost Spells. So today's poem was Swallow. I think it's just called Swallow. No, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. It's called Swift. Swifts. Um, this was the poem that when I was flipping through it um, at work I saw and I was like enchanted by this book and it, it's just it's just so good I'm gonna read it real quick I'm sorry I have to read it real quick because I just I was enchanted by it and reading these aloud is just so beautiful it really does feel like you're speaking spells out into the world swifts spin world spin swifts are here again shredding the sky in their hooligan gangs those handbrake turners, those wheelie pullers, those fire uppers of the afterburners. So whirl birds, whirl, you havoc wreckers, you thrill seekers, you gung ho joy bringers, spring harbingers, you drifting, gliding, sleep on the wingers. So imagine now, imagine just how far and fast these swifts have flown to be here. The deserts cross nonstop, the seas traverse, the mountain ranges spanned. So fly, heart, fly. Follow swifts on their screaming tours to flicker far out over ocean. Hunt a storm cell's shifting edge or pierce a cloud's slow motion. So think now, think. If one year swifts did not appear, the sky unriven, rooftop silent, all the watchers waiting, hoping for a gift that stays ungiven. So spin world, spin, and send swifts back and back and back to us again. Just, is that not enchanting? I love that so very much. Uh, my main read is The Light of the Midnight Stars by Rena Rosner. I'm enjoying it. I have been tabbing it because I do want to do a proper, I don't know, I guess you can't really see too much in this light, but I have been tabbing it because I do want to do a video review dedicated to it because it is an arc. <sighs> so sorry. <laughs> There's apparently something happening. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, they're a bit further now. I don't think they're leaving the area though, so <laughs> sorry for the sirens in the background. Um, I am enjoying The Light of the Midnight Stars. I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting into it because the way it's set up, we have three character perspectives, then this sort of like fairy tale narration, and then these like excerpts from a text called the Solomonars. And the three character point of view narrations are all in first person. The first one in each cycle is Sarah. So we get Sarah who gets like a pretty long chunky chapter and I do enjoy her chapters. And then we get Lavana, who gets like two to three pages. And then we get Hannah, who also gets a long chapter. But for some reason, it's like a diary entry instead of her just like 
narration and I kind of hate that we get like two first person narrations that are just regular and then a diary entry like maybe there will be some big payoff as to why in the end but like I'm just personally like this isn't like a mark against the book because it's very much a my taste and me being picky but I hate it I just find it very frustrating as an author I would I would never do that like I just I hate it it's not like a bad thing like you shouldn't do it but I would never do it and I just I don't like reading it it bothers me on this like intrinsic level and then we get like the excerpt from the Salaminars which is always like one to two pages and really short and like relevant ish but seems very much less relevant so I'm hoping that ties in and pays off and then we get the fairy tale narration which I do really like it is only like a page or two every time it comes up I do really like it because it it shows you like the story that would be told to an audience and then you get the first person narration of like what's actually happening so it's almost like reading like a news report of something and then talking to someone who is actually there like they're very different while also being roughly about the same thing i really do like that juxtaposition juxtaposition i think that's really nice my other thing that is making it hard is it is an adult novel but the characters are all really young and they read very ya and in fact there are points where i'm like this reads like younger ya and i wasn't expecting that so it's just throwing me off now i've kind of wrapped my head around that so i'm like okay yeah i can but that's fine i just wasn't expecting it is, is more than anything else just what was happening um so yes i am enjoying it though the story so far the plot has not like started like there's stuff happening but i think the main plot is still like gearing up and getting ready which is okay because we're laying a lot of groundwork for the sisters and i do like that i do think they're all very interesting in their different ways and i think i'm going to have a lot of enjoyment watching them grow and like their stories come together and, and come apart so i am excited i am still enjoying it it's not going to be a DNF for me. Like, I've reached the 100-something page mark. It's not a DNF. I can say that. So, yes, good. Pass that test. Still have blood and bone. I have, like, nothing to say because I haven't read any more. On the ride to work today, my plan is to listen to it because it has been a little bit since I listened to it and I don't want to, like, forget the story. I just... I don't know. It's it's when I'm not, like, actively listening to an audiobook sometimes. I just forget how much I'm enjoying the audiobook. So I think as soon as I start, like, listening to it again, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I, lo I love this. What am I, what am I doing? Like, why haven't I been listening to it? And then finally, Pride and Prejudice. I'm just about at the halfway mark on my reread. Really enjoying it. Jane is now in uh, London with their aunt and uncle, and she's finding out that Bingley's sister is a bitch. So... <laughs> that's great that's great and jane jane and lizzie is like oh mr wickham is like actually taken up with this other girl because she's a lot of money but like that's not a big deal and i'm like okay lizzie okay um <laughs> like i'm enjoying this immeasurably more on my second read through um i'll be honest i think it's going to be a book that i return to every year even if i'm not returning to it with annotations every year just because of how much i'm enjoying it so yeah so that's that's updates on reading yeah like i said if first become ashes does arrive i will drop everything and read that because as much as i'm enjoying all of these books first become ashes is a highly anticipated read and i know it'll just make me so happy i really just need a book that i can fall into and not want to leave right now and i know first become ashes is going to be that book unless it is like widely widely differently written than how Do uh, docile was which I don't think it will be so really excited for that one I really I really hope it comes in if it does I'll post like a little snippet I, like next you'll see me coming home from work and being like it's here but um <laughs> hopefully that's the next snippet you see I am running out of time so I do need to go I do want to talk about like things like capital th no just capital t things <laughs> um just like my emotional turmoil and thoughts at the moment uh, and I want to like have like a slightly serious talk but I want more time to do that and just talk about where I am like mental wise um, but that's gonna be that'll be something that uh, that that we talk about tomorrow I think so hopefully there's a first become ashes snippet in there and if not we're just gonna go right into the uh, the heavier conversation I guess not less not much of a conversation I just want to talk and have someone listen so um sorry for that okay let's talk so we're in the kitchen because the lighting is good in here on a rainy day 
Oh, I might have to end it moving if my brother comes down and wants to have breakfast, so. I said I wanted to have like a serious talk. Um, so we're gonna do that. I don't know how to put it better other than saying, lately I have been very dissatisfied with myself. I sort of try to take an, uh, like a, an, a look at like an overview of where I am in my life, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. And I keep feeling like I'm missing the mark somewhere. Today, I, I feel pretty good. Um, mental health has been really rough lately. And today I, I'm feeling like I'm on an upswing, which is good. So I think this is a better day to talk about this sort of thing. But I just feel very much like I can do more and I can be more the person I wanna be and less the person I am but I just, the person I am prevents me from getting to be the person I wanna be. And it's not big things, it's like little things. So I want to wake up at 7.30 in the morning, but every time I wake up at 7.30 in the morning, I end up going, ah, oh, no, I can, I can do another 10 minutes. Like my self-control just falls apart when I come up against a thing that I'm trying to like overcome. So I'm trying to overcome sleeping in. Every time I get up to that point, I'm just like, nah, it doesn't matter. Even though when I do eventually wake up like an hour later, I'm like, why did I do this? And it's been a lot of moments like these that have just led to me feeling very dissatisfied with myself and angry at myself for doing this and for not doing things. I have tried to be very kind to myself and be like, okay, well, next time. And I have tried to be very strict with myself and be like, you have to if you don't you know then you can't do xyz and neither of these are working and nothing has really been working and outside of this i tell myself you know things will be better when x happens and then x will happen and things don't get better and i know that's just like a coping mechanism and i know that that plays into larger mental health things right because x has like no effect on why, even though I've made it in my head that it does, it like doesn't necessarily. So that's just how I've been feeling lately. I don't feel this about every aspect of my life, but I feel it about a lot. And it has made it very hard for me to appreciate myself and appreciate what I have and appreciate my life because I just feel miserable a lot of times about it. I think COVID and being stuck inside for so long has definitely had a role to play on this. I've never been much of a person who gets out and does things, but I did a little bit and I don't do that. You know, I haven't done that in like over a year. I've been very strict about my quarantining. My bubble is really just my parents and my brother and their bubbles are larger, but there's nothing I can do to control that. Um, and then work, which I didn't start doing until October. So outside of work and these three people, my bubble, you know, that's my bubble. And I haven't done a lot of things for pleasure that I couldn't already do in my house. So I've read a lot. I've watched TV, I've played video games. I've done a lot of that kind of stuff, but I haven't really gone out and done anything outside um, or elsewhere. Like I don't live far from Chicago. I haven't been to the city in like over a year. I've driven through it like in passing. But even then we did it like twice and it was months ago. And you know, my brain goes, once once this is all over, once you have the vaccine, you can go to city, you can take a train, you can go visit museums and you'll start feeling better. And I'm, I don't actually know if that's the case, you know, because a lot of times X and Y don't correlate and it's just me getting my hopes up and still feeling miserable after the fact. Which then makes me go, you know, internally, well then why, why even bother doing this thing? It won't bring me pleasure, but it, it will, won't it? I don't know. So that's just how I'm feeling. And I wanted to talk about it because I think you see a lot in these vlogs. I try to be honest a lot in these vlogs. I try to show that I have ups and downs. I try to show what a good day looks like and what a bad day looks like. And I think you see a lot of bad days. And I don't know, maybe you watching it, the bad days don't overpower the good, but me watching whenever I watch back, whenever I'm editing, I always see the bad overpowering the good and I, I try not to be so dark and, and, and negative. <laughs> you know, I don't want you guys to think I'm like this constantly depressed person because like it is always an issue, right? I'm always dealing with it, but some days are not bad. Some days are not that bad at all. And some days are actually very good. 
and then there are just some days that are really horrible so i just wanted to talk about what i'm feeling i don't have a solution i am hoping like i said once i have a vaccine which i don't even have a date for an appointment yet but it's going to be opening up on in my state on the 12th uh, so hopefully soon hopefully before the end of april is my goal i think that'd be really swell i think once that's behind me i'm going to try to do something every week to get me out of the house and not work related out of the house not necessity related out of the house but that'll get me out of the house and that will i want to make me happy but i like again that's there is no guarantee that it will it won't change anything really except for those moments but something that'll get me out and get me in a different environment i mentioned museums i really miss museums so much i don't even know which museums are open i think they all are um in the city i really would love to go to the art museum or the observatory those are my top two if they're open i don't even know i also want to go visit some parks i have a membership for the arboretum and I really want to go visit the Arboretum. I already told a friend I would like go with them, but I don't know when they're going to be able to go. And I'm like, I'm not waiting for you. <laughs> I want to go anyways. So I do want to try to do that. I think my goal is going to be Arboretum once a month at least and a museum once a month at least. So that's like two weeks, um, but I think I can do it. I think I could manage it. Um, well, obviously once the, once the vaccine is behind me, I also hopefully want to be able to see people in person again. I miss a lot of my friends. Some of them already have vaccines, some of them don't. So obviously I'll wait until the ones who don't have vaccines. I'm thinking about doing like a game night at home. I think that would be cool. But all these things that I want to do, all these things that I'm like, this this will make me feel better. I, I don't know if it will. And I don't know if it will just feed into this feeling dissatisfied with myself. Because it's like, oh, I'm just like patching up holes that need you know a lot more work on them these are all goals but i don't know if they're gonna have like a positive effect on me that's kind of upsetting to think about as well i've thought about keeping a mood diary or something to just like track it track it but i've tried that in the past and i just couldn't keep up with it so probably won't go probably not gonna do that like i said i do want to work on myself internally and externally and just a lot of different categories and i think one of the ways i want to do that is like like picking a goal every week and working towards it so it's thursday yeah it's thursday so i'm going to you know starting i think sunday so saturday night sit down be like what goal do i want to work on this week and starting sunday really start working on it and seeing if i can you know keep this sort of forefront in my mind i don't know what those goals are going to be i have no idea i'll talk about them on the vlog i think if they come up and i think they're interesting to talk about it if it's something like skincare i don't know maybe i'll share but yeah this week's goal is like taking care of my skin um but yeah yes yeah um <laughs> that that's just how i'm feeling that's just what i wanted to talk about do you like seeing mental health things on the vlog or is that like you don't like watching that um i'm not gonna say it's gonna like sway what i do necessarily but I am curious because I don't need to put as much content about that in there. Uh, I don't think it's something I would ever ignore completely, but like I said, if it's something you actually appreciate or want to hear and know more about, also let me know that down below, but um, that's just what I want to talk to you about today. That's all. I am a... <laughs> You probably won't see me again until tomorrow. I'll probably do... I don't think I'm going to do a reading update tonight because I didn't read a lot. There's not much to update on. Um, and First Become Ashes still has not arrived, so hopefully today we'll see. Um, but, but yes, um, see, 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 you, see you in a bit, see you in a bit. It's here. Oh my god, it's here. 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 Look at it. It's here. Oh my god, it's here. Oh my god. <sighs> <laughs> I did. Okay. 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 I know I said I would drop everything to read it, but I really want to do a 24 hour reading vlog type video. So I'm going to wait until Saturday morning. That's all I have to say. I think the vlog for it is going to go up before this vlog. So I'll link it here if it does, but oh my God, I'm so freaking excited. 
it's going to be torture waiting to get to it but I just like I want to record all my thoughts and feelings because I'm gonna have so many because I've been waiting for this book for two years okay okay also also I got some calico critters from a little blind box look at how perfect and cute they are oh, I love them Okay, I'm gonna go get ready for bed. I probably won't check in again until after work tomorrow and I'll do a reading update and talk about the plan for First Become Ashes tomorrow. So, see you soon. Lighting's not great. Tried a couple different things, it's not happening. So, uh, I was gonna get all dressed up and ready to close out this vlog, but um, I'm feeling cozy. It's a rainy Saturday. I thought I was gonna have some time alone this morning, but I slept in. I don't actually think I'm gonna have any time alone, which sucks. Fucking sucks, man. <laughs> In case you didn't know how I feel about that. But this is the wrap up. This is the end of the vlog. I am about to kickstart another vlog, which is actually going to be dropping first because it's, I wanted to get it closer to the release date and that is going to be my 24 hour vlog for reading First Become Ashes. So I'll definitely link that above and below. Go check that out. But where am I? Where am I on my book? The Light of the Midnight Stars. I'm about halfway. I am enjoying it. I feel like there is something about this book, like just the balance of the way the story is told, makes it a little hard for me to get really into it. It's not a book that I am like, it's not a book that when I'm away from it, I'm like constantly thinking of. So that is a shame, but it is still a good book. Objectively, I think it's good. It's very fairy tale. Character motivations, I'm unsure of sometimes, but because it is such a fairy tale story, I'm like, I don't know if I need to know. I think the fact that they're just like trusting in the system of fairy tale is fine it works also there are so many lovely quotes like just I've been moved by several of them so yes I will probably do a full review for this because it's an arc and I feel like I should so yeah that that will be happening at some point I'm enjoying it not going to be a favorite is where that is where that's at there is a new character that's introduced Theodore I don't want to say anything else but if you know you know fully support love love the character love okay uh children of blood and bone i still haven't listened to that much of it i'm i'm like there i'm what what is that like 150 pages in i'm 150 pages in which isn't far i'm enjoying it i really appreciate how quickly it's moving i don't feel particularly drawn to any of the characters i like them all like i think they're all great i think they're all good but like in legend born which is the last audiobook i listened to I felt like almost immediately drawn to Brie. Like I love her. I thought she was a great character. And as the as that book progressed, there were other characters. I was like, wait, I love you too. Like there's so many good characters. Whereas this, they're all good characters, but I'm just not feeling that spark with any of them. That I was like, I'm super invested in you. Particularly again, not super far. That could easily change. But at this point in the book, it's it's good. Again, it's good. But doesn't seem like it's on the path to be a favorite. And because I'm crazy, I actually started reading another book. Um, I started reading Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress. I will talk more about this in my next sort of weekly vlog. But I, um, this is like recommended by a coworker of mine, and I'm kind of reading it for another video concept that I'm thinking about doing. So far, um, I've only read like 15 pages. My goal is like 15 pages a day, and it is surprisingly funny. I laughed a lot. Like half these tabs are like the card died i'm sorry i think what i was saying was that this is surprisingly funny for a very dark book we're moving on now because i'm at my wits end okay um <laughs> and finally the lost spells i thought i would read to you i'm about halfway so this is actually going to take me a lot longer than i thought it would which is good i am enjoying spending a lot of time with it um but i thought i'd read to you the final the final poem i'm going to read for this vlog just look at this art Snow hair. Snow hair whitens as the year turns dark, by the cairn of the wolf in the glen of the lark. Night grows stronger, sleet falls sharp on crag and moor, by the burn of a deer on the eagle's tor. Out on the hill, hair hunkers under hag, hides in heather, by the lock of the buzzard at the pass of the weather, where the cold vanishes into spindrift, hail, blizzard's flight. Hair walking is graceless, all long-limbed lovers, by the Salmon River on the road of reavers. Awkward pistons, steam-powered shunts, and sudden shocks, 
by the ford of the pines and the hollow of the fox. Running hair, though, flows through snow like water over stone, by the cliff of the kite at the peak of the rowan, each long line of tracks a row of inkwells in the white. So that, that's our final poem. I, I, these are so lovely. They very much feel like spells. I want to go and like sing them to the world, you know? You know? But yes, this is, this is it for today's, today's vlog, this week's vlog, last 10 days vlog. I'm going to go do my first Become Ashes reading vlog and I absolutely cannot wait for this book. I just, I'm so excited. I'm like, I'm like vibrating. Um, so yes, check that out. Thank you for sticking with me this time. It was, it was, uh, ups and downs, huh? It was ups and downs. But yes, thank you for sticking around. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And if you like to see more content like this, definitely subscribe. I will see you guys later. Bye.